Hello, I'm Terry David Mulligan, and uh, this is the Terry David, <laughs> Terry David Mulligan YouTube channel. That's just the way it works. Sorry. Um, a friend comes back to Mulligan's 2, our basic show. Art Bergman is his name, and uh, I've known him a long time. I And I have said this before, and I'll say it again. I'm astonished that he's still standing and talking to me, sorry, sitting and talking to me, and just here with us on this planet. Uh, Art has gone through incredible highs and desperate lows over the last couple of years. <clears throat> he was awarded the inducted into the Canadian Order of Canada. Remarkable, really. The lows were the loss of his wife, Sherry. They'd been together 31 years. They were a formidable pair. And they loved each other. And they worked well together. And the only way that Art was ever going to survive that loss was to throw himself into his work. And, and it would reflect his loss, his loneliness, his grief, and perhaps the hope that he helped for the future. And so that's the album that's just been released a couple of days ago called Shadow Walk. We're going to talk to Art Bergman about Shadow Walk and the life ahead for him. We'll also talk to Russell Broom, who was his co-producer, that was in the studio with him playing and watching over him, and just his observations on the art that walked into the room at the beginning and the the art that left that studio weeks and weeks and weeks later. So here you go. This is the Terry David Mulligan YouTube channel interview, the complete interview with Art Bergman and a, a follow-up interview with Russell Broom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He is, he is Art Bergman. I wish I had actually the album cover to hold up. It's a candle. Uh, and it's a it's a darkened room, and the candle is the light. Uh, the the the, the uh, I don't know where the shot came from, but the album that we're going to talk about is called Shadow Walk. Art Bergman's our guest. Into a legacy of love, yes. Uh, candle shot on the back is of my late wife Sherry. Yep. But uh, it just arrived yesterday to headquarters in Toronto at WeWork, and uh, you don't have a picture of the cover, we could send it to you. <laughs> I, I I have the, the, I was sent the cover, what I thought was the cover with the candle on it, but if that's not it, never mind. That's it, yes, that's it. Okay, well, by the way, uh, we're talking on September the 30th, my friend, the day after your album gets released, so I'm going to ask my first question. So, Please. Art... Art, last night, you kicked off the album release uh, journey at the rickshaw in Vancouver. How did it go? <laughs> Why are we doing this? Uh, time travel. Hmm. No, I'll, was... I'll take it back. No, I'll take it back. It's not fair. Um, I love the fact that you're going to kick off this uh, this album September the 29th at the rickshaw, and uh, which was last night, of course. And but um, we're talking weeks earlier. What what are your thoughts about going back into that room? What do you remember about uh, your time in the rickshaw? Do you remember your time in the rickshaw and why that room? Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm confused now. I thought we were going to talk in the present tense, but okay. uh, I remember playing that. I don't know, and I, I uh, have a difficulty with time. I don't even know what day it is half the time. So, and that's a beautiful thing. Uh, I try to live in the now and the rickshaw. I don't, I don't know how many, it was probably, I play every few years somewhere. And that was one of the places that beautiful, big stage, beautiful, big crowd, 400, 500 people. And it was uh, immense. <laughs> It's more than just you in a room by yourself. Um, you moved back to Vancouver. What part of town did you head for? 
East Van, of course, my my old stomping grounds. But East Vancouver, West, what? Yes, yes, just off two blocks off Commercial Drive. Very nice. Grand, yeah, Second Avenue. You, um, what's it like being back on the coast? Mm, uh, noisy, loud. I watch rats at night go up and down my alley. <laughs> Inspiring. I'm short, but. Uh, are there, you know, are, there, are there faces? Years, are, are there faces? You years, people you know? No, I haven't met, met many. The odd odd wave and uh, and people know my old records, don't know the new records. But uh, I I inform them of what I'm doing with my yes life and my new songs. Always writing, so got constant. I saw, post, uh, I, saw, no, no, I saw that post. I saw that. Listen, I saw that post the other day where you were saying, "Okay, I'm going to go back on stage here. W w tell me what songs you want to hear. What can I play? And, and and don't don't just give me the old stuff. Do, do any of you guys have any of you guys listened to my last three albums? Yeah, uh, a lot of them had, and now I was uh, pleasantly uh, reminded. Uh, uh, how many fans I have here, here and there? And, well, it's the internet. Who who knows where they are? But uh, uh, people have an encyclopedic knowledge of my work um, more than I have, more than I can remember. And, and uh, there were some awesome suggestions of what songs to play. And I will, I will compress it into a set list of you know maybe ninety minutes, two hours, and. Uh, that that's a uh, brain crushing work. <laughs> uh, R Russell was telling me that in your set uh, at the uh, Calgary Folk Festival, almost all those songs were new. Uh, yeah, uh, new to the audience. I and I haven't played Calgary in six years, and I haven't played Vancouver. What's it been five five years? And. Uh, Late Stage Empire Dementia came out, which is one of my greatest records ever. And uh, people don't know the songs. So it was awesome to play songs like uh, Christo Fascist for the first time. Uh, I will tell you up front, uh, I'm supposed to be a, a critical journalist being asked for my, uh, not by you, but by others about, well, what do you think of the album? I think that Shadow Walk is, in fact, uh, your best work. Yeah, it's uh, maybe kind of stuff I could have done sooner, but it uh, takes a big event to change your mindset and uh, expression of uh, of love in, in the uh, in the work is something uh, new to me very uh very to the bone i'll say it so you don't have to uh are you uh you lost sherry your wife of 30 years in march of 2022 and this album shadow walk is a direct result of that and an answer to a, a dialogue with yourself it's all about sherry when she was there and sherry when she's not um uh, i'm hoping in that whole process that you found uh um healing of some kind any kind uh yeah the album goes through stages of of grief and ends up uh, on the other side to acceptance and and love and uh, it's a beautiful beautiful I don't know how long it is, an hour of transition involved. The depths of pain to to out to love on the other side. I'm gonna start if I, it's okay with you, because there's lots of things I can ask as we go, but I want I want people to hear some of the music. I can't play it all, but I'll do my best. Yeah. Uh, you uh, the first thing you released you released was Raw Naked Monday. <laughs> Great song. Great song. And I think somewhere along the way, I saw a quote from you saying, uh, it's an actual, yes, that's actually happened. Raw Naked Monday. 
can you be more specific? <laughs> <laughs> it was no, Monday you were naked? I have been naked on that Monday after after killing Sunday. Yep. The day that Sherry died, I, I've uh, I've met someone and she pulled me through the uh, poet who writes on on half the wordsies of the record, yep. uh, Fisher K, and uh, she helped me through the whole process. Could you have done it by yourself? Um, nope. Okay. Uh, well, I was I was ready to kill myself at the beginning of this venture. So, and with uh, her and Russell's help, uh, twirling the twirling the controls. I mean, uh, it's a beautiful thing now. Death of a siren. Yeah, that starts. It, well, the poem "Jagged" starts into "Death of a Siren." That's right. Uh, I wrote that within three weeks of Sherry's death. I uh, just a immense gift from her. It's just a gift to her. You made a note, and I appreciate it. It's me trying to see my wife uh, in everything around me. Did it work for you? Uh, yeah, she's part of my DNA. So sure. she lives, you know. She lives. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. As your heart beats, she does. Yeah. So, um, Death of a Siren is a, a, a did it. Uh, I was going to say write itself, which is not fair. Did it form itself? Did it just come out naturally? Yes, it just came out. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so, some of this can be painful. That's all. Yeah, I wanted to turn the Leonard Cohen line on its on its head too. The uh, there is no crack that lets in the light. Yeah. You were once described, by the way, as uh, the punk Leonard Cohen. Uh, I'll take it. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, I, I want to play Death of a Siren. Uh, is there anything you want to tell the audience out there? Uh, astoundingly beautiful. And if you don't cry, you don't have a heart. Okay. Uh, Killing Sundays. I understand Killing Sundays. It's a horrible song. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to kill time, kill a whole day out of existence. Uh, and make money. And then on to Raw Naked Money, which is my new holy day. There you go. Okay. Because they're, they're tied by grief. They're all tied by grief. However, there is hope. There's hope. Yes. In Westerly Caress. There is hope in there. Yeah, that's first intimations of uh, of hope came flying over the mountains from Patricia Kay. And I found out she's an amazing poet and we started to work together. In that song, I took lines of hers and that was the first one we did together. Uh, there's a track, the next track, uh, uh, excuse me for just doing the tracks. I just want to uh, find a way to play these tunes. Um, the next track is Love 3. Was there a Love 1 and Love 2? Well, yeah, there's Love to the First Power, Love to the Second Power, and this is uh, Love to the Third Power. So Love Cubed. And you included some of Sherry's words. You want yeah. to you want to share them with us? Uh, yeah, with a bit of advice she left for her family, uh, Regret wears thin through this old skin. Uh, I'm, I'm having a block this morning. I'm sorry. I got one. Okay. Regret you, wears thin. Use your so, youth while you can. Yes. Give your love while alive. Yes. Don't don't waste a second of your life. Uh, with all the discombobulation about you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Thinking to go local, go love, go, go local love. Yes. Two things I love about cut and paste. It's not written by you, which makes it very special. And I love the tabla by Sonny. It's really nice. Sonny Mataru, yes. Uh, he been played on that and Candlelight. And uh, uh, I've always loved uh, Eastern Sound that Beatles brought into the public mind. And uh, I wanted that sound for a couple of these tracks. Who wrote the song? Uh, Donna Kerbel, an uh, old, old, dear friend of mine from Toronto. And uh, she's been through her own heartbreak and issues. And uh, that song is about addiction. And uh, she nails it pretty hard and with beautiful words. He's... Had she written it with you in mind? No, no. Okay. She, she wrote She's got a band called Luxury Bob. Yes. And uh, that's the artistic name of her work. Something for the pain is the line that stands out for me. Mm -hmm. Something for the pain. In um, a fine, fast, free fall. Yes. Jump from the plane. Something for the pain. Jump from the plane in a fine, fast, free fall. In, in Winter Fire... Uh, smoke and fire. Um, there's a line in there that says, uh, "My embers flame on." That's that's a metaphor for your fire, of course. But you have your own embers inside of you. Oh, uh, that line's not in there. <laughs> it's uh, I, uh, Sherry s says to me in a winter fire. She says, uh, "I'm here in your winter fire," and she blesses me in my new in my new life and love. And that's the chorus. I'm here in your winter fire. Thank you. I'm feeling you. I love Children of Kali. I love the song. Amazing. Amazing song. A call to youth. Take back your mind. Take back your mind. Where did, the, where did the song come from? How did it develop? The lyrics in front of me. <laughs> where did that song come from? Uh, well, I, I heard, it came from a, a book I heard about, and I've yet to read, but I love the idea. It's uh, in, in the near future, the children of the world, uh, the intelligent ones get together and start assassinating, uh, you know, people like oil executives and the great... Uh, pigs that reign over us. <laughs> okay. Cut, the children of Macaulay cut the throat of the old familiar enemy. Where, uh, Where is the song that finds peace at the end of this story, this album? Well, where it's... Uh, to Raw Naked Money Children. Oh, there's... Uh, him for us and uh, candlelight at the end. Well, there's both of them, yes. Yes. Him for us. Was that not one of the singles that you released? Yeah, we came out with Raw Naked Monday. Yep. Okay. All right. Enough about the tracks. I just want to talk about Art Bergman. So show me, show me some of his heart, will you? We Here's talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was by the way let me take you back to the calgary folk festival how was that performance for you what how were you feeling getting out on stage and what did it feel like for you it was great the band was flawless they were amazing i was the only one who screwed up i uh I started a song with a capo on my guitar neck in the, on the wrong fret, and uh, it came out as this big wash of metal. And in two seconds, I recognized it and and uh, charmingly changed my capo, and we roared on. And and, and uh, that was the only screw up. And uh, those two sisters, Zadrovich sisters, are amazing singers and guitar and bass. And then Russell Broom, of course, was. Yeah. Immaculate as is his want. And what did it feel like being out there? 
uh, felt strange. They had us outside the festival uh, where people could watch us for free, so that was okay, I guess. But uh, I wanted to feel like it uh, felt like something I do. <laughs> All right. It do. Um, can you tell me? I'm I'm trying to not ask the question that wants to be asked, which is, did this exercise, this these months, these weeks, these minutes of making this music, creating this music, recording it, capturing it, mixing it, did it save you? Oh yeah, kept kept uh, me busy. The songs came, some of them in the middle of the night, like the hymn came. At Five in the morning, Sherry said to me, please, I am for all of us. And uh, I wrote that song in an hour that morning. Mm. But, uh, and then fine tuning and then going into Russell's place to record every new song as it came out. It was a, a beautiful, heartbreaking to beautiful year. And, and then in the studio, all the demos with Russell in the studio and putting it all together it's been quite quite a year and a half now and you moved and i moved from alberta to vancouver that was a huge endeavor we had a house full of yeah. shit to get rid of uh sherry was a collector of fine mm -hmm. things and things that she hated to see go to waste and uh, we had to distribute all of that stuff and uh I kept all the books and important art, and uh, here I am. And with some awesome help from people in Calgary, to load up the truck and get it out here. And uh, it's been several journeys at once, I suppose. Uh, did you... Um... I know that you brought, you brought your lyric books with you. You've shown me those books. You've opened them up and, and shown them to me. Do they, are they your diary as well? As being the lyrics books, are they your diary as well? Can you mark time with them? Uh, no. <laughs> well, my songs are my diary, yes. As, as I move through life, uh, diuretically writing it all down and changing it into songs uh, my songs are my diary yes to all right simple answer okay thank you rather you say it than me um now the rickshaw uh after the rickshaw post rickshaw when they carry you through the audience on their shoulders and throw you out the front door what do you do with the rest of this year? What do you do with this album? How do you roll it out? Do you have the strength to tour? No, I don't have the strength to tour. Uh, I don't have the infrastructure to tour. So uh, I will play the, the odd show. I suppose I'm playing Toronto November 2nd. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I'll be out shilling the record, I suppose, to do. To, no great degree, but uh, I can't. I can't. Uh, I have scoliosis. I can't uh, stand up and play. So you know that's uh, used to be my forte is uh, yes, feeling about the stage. So I can't do that. So uh, people have to suffice with the music. I'm, I can still play guitar and sing really well. So I shall endeavor. We could we could bring some buckets of filled with some liquid out on stage, and you could kick them into the audience just to get a reaction. We can we can build in some theatrics. I don't need to do that. Okay. Uh, I, the songs the songs should lift everyone up and make them revolt. Wow! By the way, you the the songs and the music will attract people many people who've gone through the same process of loss they'll you'll be sharing your journey with them right that's right uh, this, this album's for everyone it's not just uh 
uh, I've met a lot of people uh, after uh, after this happened uh, who uh, appreciate my words. So uh, it's a beautiful thing. All right. So here's the deal. I'm tired of asking questions. I'd rather have you talk. Nah, <laughs> I'm not a talker. Well, that, I know, but but I'm asking you. To, I'm asking you questions, and and it feels like a like. A, is is it's uncomfortable um i well, as it's comfortable it's your job uh, I'm, I'm i'm doing a bad job of uh locuting my answers uh, so find some of your own words that you want to say about this album and i'll step out of the way go well can i work on it can i i mean everything's in the in the in the music and the words i uh, sweated and cried over these over these songs and worked really hard on them and with uh, Patrizia's help I mean she's an awesome wordsmith I mean she's encyclopedic man oh incredible and uh, working together has been uh, the highlights of my life um, so proud so proud of uh so proud of our work together. It's just immense. I don't know what else to say about it. It's uh, it's has such beauty in there. You can uh, dwell on, and you, you can listen to it over and over. I believe because there's new bits of uh, cones of wisdom in there if you look and listen hard enough. Well done. Well Thank done. Thank you. Because you know this this doesn't work if you don't empty your heart and and yeah, it's emptied out. Spill uh, it out on the page. <laughs> um, I. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Maybe we could. Uh, it would do this uh, again when I have the lyrics in front of me and I could, you know, quote them more accurately than we, we, my mumbling today. We may have to do a part two. Um, but here's the thing. Um, is this, uh, I, I, I had a, a conversation with Jim Cuddy about Mariposa. They were at Mariposa. And Cuddy's on stage with Blue Rodeo looking at the audience and thinking, how many of these these young audience members even know who we are or these songs. Uh, and, uh, then he, yes. and then he realized that, um, that in fact, that they were, they were mouthing the words that they were saying, there's ge a generational thing going on. Do you think those, those, that audience that you had in the beginning has stuck with you is taking, going through this journey as well? My cult. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah you cult. Used to hang on every single word I say. Yep. Uh, yeah, they've stuck with me through thick and thin. I hope they have a few children that can uh, can listen. I think there's a few grandkids by now. Yeah, but uh, a bit more radio play would help so I could get to Jim Cuddy's complaining. Oh my God, Kurt. I know he was. He, he's astounded. I'm sure. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, the children are coming. Actually, yeah, yeah. One just wrote me the other day, uh, Allie Sullivan. She's a daughter, and she is a child now. Who's coming? So there's there's one. There's one. Uh, two generations. My music has passed through. Beautiful. It is beautiful. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. And and the art that you are now, the music you are now, is so different from, and yet similar to what you were doing many years ago it's just introspective it's it's quieter it's well thought out it's not so angry it's understanding it's you've matured well, one must progress now <laughs> and the more you learn you want to get it 
put it into your mute works. So it's an evolution. And uh, I found I, I can sing really well. I don't have to scream. Uh, I think the music lasts longer that way. Actually, I think you should think about a spoken word record down the way. And I also think uh, a, a, book, next. a yep. book would a book would be would be in order. Yeah, a uh, book. We're going to work on a book of uh, of my songs, with lyrics, and uh, poetry. And yes, uh, spoken word is coming next with ambient noise behind it. Okay. Uh, where, where do you yes. think the hit? Where, <laughs> Where do you think the hit is on this? Uh, what track are we going to love the most? I got mine. I don't know. It's, uh, people are different. I have gothic goth fans, so they will love Love Cubed and Candlelight and Cut and Paste. Uh, uh, I, mm, I like them all. They each have a place in the, in the year and a half journey. Winter Fire. That as hits. Raw Naked Monday is a hit. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, were you listening to any other music while you were writing? Any other no. Any other artists? No. I didn't listen to anything. Okay. I'm not up on whatever's out there. I couldn't listen to music for a long time, except for the stuff that came out of me. Yeah. Shame. I'm getting back into it. I, I don't know what, what what's uh, current or the rigor. I mean, I like good music. And, uh, there's good music and there's bad music. There's ACDC. Uh, <laughs> Straight up rock and roll. <laughs> Skinny puppy. Skinny puppy. <laughs> Now, which of now I mean, uh, that post that you did a couple of days ago about uh, don't you guys don't request don't request the old stuff or, uh, request the new stuff? Are any of you guys listening to my last three albums? I don't think so. You spat out um, of the, oh, of the old. Yes, you did uh, of the old songs <laughs> of the old songs. Those are the songs from the other art. Uh, which ones can you bring forward and still sing? Which ones would you bring? Are there a few well, in between? There's so many, I have to uh, learn them all with my band. <laughs> Relearn them, memorize them. I will I will do my best to, but uh, it's amazing what an influence. Uh, I noticed people request the songs that there were videos for in the day, much yeah. music. Okay. Down from Vegas and, and a contract and our little secret even. And... Uh, it's quite amazing the, the influence that those videos had. But uh, other people are more well versed in my work and requested the oddest songs. So I'm going to try and do a mix of, of all of those mm -hmm. in my performances. Uh, uh, Russell said that uh, your voice uh, was bang on. You, he didn't have to adjust to anything, that your voice is, it, it was uh, in great shape. Uh, this is good to hear. How's the rest of you working out? Uh, is your body going to hold up? Um, we shall see. Uh, well, what do you think? So, you know. Well, yeah, I do know. I have to see a specialist, see if he can help me. Okay. I can't walk, so it's very far. So mm -hmm. I want to be able to stand up and play, but uh, yeah. I was going to physio for a while, but it uh, made all, everything worse. So I have to do some investigation on what's happening with my uh, my joints. I might need new hips, new hips and shoulders. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, we w only wish nothing but the best for you. The fact that you and I are a upright and breathing is ridiculous. We're lucky as hell. We shouldn't. We should count our blessings. Yeah, I'm, I'm many times lucky. I can tell you that. Many times, Art. And many, many times, I'm astonished. I'm still talking to you. I've astonished. died many times. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Okay. Uh, good luck with this uh, shadow walk of yours. Yeah, please. We'll, uh, we'll return. Listen, listen. Knock him dead at the rickshaw.
That was yesterday. <laughs> that was yesterday. Um, I believe I have found Russell uh, in his studio, Russell Broom. Is it called yes. the Broom Closet? What do you call it? Yeah, the Broom Closet. <laughs> I just made that up. Is that true? Is it actually <laughs> yeah, it is true. <laughs> Mercy. Now, tell me about your relationship with Art Bergman. Where did that well, start? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I inherited half of an Art Bergman record a couple of years ago. That was partly done, but uh, still needed a fair bit of work doing to it. Was that late and stage? As late stage Empire Dementia. Yeah. So him and I basically completed it together over... Uh, the COVID pandemic lockdown period. And uh, it was an adventure. Well, he, he must have been, I, I, I believe he was reaching out because everybody had to find a way to put someone else in the room with them. Mm. Some people can spark all by themselves. They can do that. But mm -hmm. you coming into his uh, uh, writing sequence of events would be, uh, he may, he might be looking for you as a guitarist or as a sideman, whatever, because you, you play your instruments. But d he knew about your songwriting as well. Uh, yeah, I think he knew a bit about me. Um, you know, we didn't really travel in in similar circles. You know, I my kind of early punk rock era was playing with Jerry Jerry and the Sons of Rhythm Orchestra and touring across Canada. Yeah. And I've done a lot of records for a band called Chicks Dig It as well. So you know, I guess I. But I'm always kind of in, you know, the music I listen to when I go home is it's more indie rock and roll, noisy, fun stuff. You know, I sometimes I'm, I'm good at things that I don't necessarily like, <laughs> not referring to any artist we've spoken to. But, you know, the music I consume and the music I listen to isn't always what I work on. Um, but in art's case, it kind of those two worlds sort of collided, which was neat for me. Um, but, yeah, it's with art, it's my job is to be a facilitator it's to get a machete out and, and clear the path and sort of give him the ability to be as clear and as upfront with what he needs to say and how he wants to say it and uh, I love that part of being a producer it's a really that's a really fulfilling part of the job but there has to be agreement on both sides of the the, the microphone in that, art's that... case it's more disagreement you know I think you have to fight for what you want with it and uh and that's great. And, you know, part of my, my production philosophy is I, when I get in the room with an artist, I try and make definitive statements about things, not because I feel I have the answer, but because that triggers a dialogue where people have conviction and they say what they really mean and really believe rather than the old, I ah, may be this, we could do that, you know, because tentative is the kiss of death with music for me. Yeah. And um, I try and eliminate that. And art doesn't have much tentativeness to him which is great. <laughs> so, so between that first record, yeah, this record, mm. several compelling events happened in Art's life. One, mm -hmm. he lost his, his soul in Sherry, mm -hmm. he lost his wife, and, and we know how much he loved her. And he, he was given the order of freaking Canada. Like, how how dynamic does your life need to be? <laughs> you know, like I, there's no other way to look at that. It's, it's the ecstasy and the tragedy in one. Like I, I can't believe the stuff that the, the accolades he's earned and the pain he has to go through as a human being. It's remarkable. I think it's bittersweet is what it is. Mm. Uh, so shadow walk. Yeah. Was it called that when you came into the project? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, Right after Sherry passed, Art reached out because he had a song and it was called Death of a Siren. And yeah. that was the first thing we worked on together that was sort of post that experience. And he was still very much in it. Um, so he would come to work on the song and I, I wouldn't ask him how he was. I wouldn't dare. Um, it was more he needed to find a place to put some of that energy and to be creative. And um, so I was grateful to be a part of, of facilitating that for him. But uh, to work on something with that level of sort of emotional weight and that rawness is, is extremely difficult, far more difficult for art. But even as a producer to come in and 
And, you know, this is the only job I've had is playing music for the last 37, 38 years. So, you know, there are days where you kind of come in and you go to work, right? It's kind of feels like a job. And then there are days like you have with art where you come in and you know, there's much more at stake for him. And that this is his um, way of communicating with the world is, is music and, and his lyrics. So to be able to facilitate that, it, it, it takes a different level of focus that not all artists require. And it really is a privilege to work with him that way. But uh, holy cow, that first, the first song was extremely uh, difficult and very tenuous. And I was really proud of him just for getting through it. Uh, tell me, um, um, you know, I was talking about that balance at Fulcrum. Mm -hmm. You uh, would have to be, you would, might use your own words, but you, you, you want to be involved and you want to be supportive, mm -hmm. but you don't want to intrude. I mean, that, that's, you have to have to know where that line is, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's, there's a great Fiona Apple quote that I lean on a lot. And she may not have been the first person to say it, but she's the first person I heard say it. And she said, it's not whether it's right or wrong or good or bad, is it true or not? And when I use that, I apply that methodology and that way of thinking to anything I work on, it honestly makes it a lot easier because then you're not chasing something, you're not looking for something, you're digging and you're pushing for something that has an authenticity to it. And uh, so again, working with art, I really feel that my job is to be a facilitator and whatever tricks I have in my bag as a producer, an engineer, a guitar player, like whatever he needs, he has access to. And we draw from it song by song to sort of give him the colors and the textures he wants on the songs he's written. Can you tell me which ones you co-wrote? Uh, actually on this record, I didn't co-write any. Okay. Uh, there are two spoken word pieces that I created the music backdrops for but uh, we didn't really work as writers together. Let me ask you about Love 3. Yeah. I, I like, I, I, all of a sudden I went, okay, a change in direction. Uh, tell, uh, love 3, what was, what was going on with Love 3? Well, he calls it Love Cubed. And uh, it's, it's an odd song because it's, a, it's, a, it's, a two, it's two distinctly different pieces of music that are sort of uh, bolted together. Yeah. Um, the bridge and it starts with something that honestly sounds like how he seemed to be feeling in the midst of all of that horror that he was going through with losing his partner and trying to find uh himself after that were there, so, were there moments in the studio when he said i can't do this today uh no okay all right you know, he he didn't shy away from anything which was okay. it's funny you bring that up yeah because you would think there would be days where he couldn't but no the thing that made that song different particularly love cubes was the kind of the moaning noises on the intro and that was him he was just like i want two tracks and i'm just gonna sound like i'm in pain and that sort of gave the song this whole different palette and this whole it, it gave it permission to go down an avenue that was far darker than it originally was going to be. Russell Crowe, who was in the... Russell Crowe, my friend. <laughs> Russell Broom. Uh, I do. I just ran across... I just got an email from him. <laughs> um, we did a movie together in uh, Canmore. Um, oh, fantastic. Uh, Russell Broom in his studio. Um, I'm going to ask you about a couple, couple of tracks. Just yep. comments off the top. A cut and paste. It's a cover of a song um i'm not sure who the band is and uh that was an just an interesting choice from art and we had a really beautiful tabla player named sunny mataru play on it and it, the song's a bit of a dialogue between art's vocal and the tabla which is nothing i've heard on an art bergman record before winter fire it's my favorite song on the record yeah it's it is just seeing it spread out as a as a waveform you can mm. see the dynamics in it. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's a, it's a scratch vocal from the bed track that we managed to salvage. And um, the intent with that song was a way of trying to bring some elements sonically from late stage Empire Dementia, some of the more kind of rootsy and ethereal stuff, and then build it into something that had a bit more of a redemptive quality. The late stage record to me is is 
it feels darker than this one, ironically enough. We're going to get back um, to late. We're going to get yeah. back to late stages. Cool. Okay. This, uh, Art just had a comment. Um, uh, raw naked Monday, which I understand is literally correct. Yeah, hilarious. Like, but it, not in the studio, mate. Uh, yeah, you know, like it's he wrote a power pop song, yeah. <laughs> and we just let it be that. You know, yeah. it's hooky. It's got a nice guitar part that he wrote that I stole, and uh, it's you know, it's just. It's a harkens back to kind of good Vancouver power pop to me. Nice. How about uh, Children of Kelly? Uh, an obvious Beatle influence. Some incredible background vocals by a, a young lady named Aiden, who uh, was a friend of arts who came in and sang. And she did just an, an incredible job on that song in particular. And a story about it's uh, it's based on a novel and it's uh, it's a cult. It's a cult of people in, in uh, India who who basically target the wealthy, I believe, and uh, and kill them. Oh, yes. But art can expand on that a little more. Art. Uh, Shadow Walk, the, the title track. Um, we don't there isn't a title track on that. So there There's is a, one called Jagged One jagged one yeah so those the jagged and impotence are two kind of tone poems yeah um and jagged was we just performed that live together in my little studio i played a guitar track and he recited it and that's okay it. we didn't I, edit we didn't clean it up i've misread the uh, list of the jagged one death of a siren killing sun yeah. was a caress and i i i my brain put in shadow walk at the top it's all good no yep. worries um a hymn for us. Now, I you should ask Art about where that song came from and the lyric and the idea. But that was a song, one of the first songs I heard him do that had a level of positivity to it that was just beautiful. And it's it's a song of hope. It's a song of, of love and connection. And uh, it was very different than anything I'd ever worked on with him before. Um, and it's, to me, which makes it extremely brave. You know, like the guy, you cannot put art in a box, no. <laughs> you know. What's that last track? What is the last track? Is it Candlelight? Yes, I don't candle. have the song list in front candle. of me. That's right. Yeah, that's an intense song. That's, um, again, a beautiful dialogue between Art's vocal and a tabla player. And Paul Rigby playing some really cool um, East Indian influenced or South Asian influenced guitar parts. But um, that's a scratch vocal on that track as well that we cut at my studio in Alberta in February. And we basically built the band around what Art sang and played. Um, I was going to ask you about... Hmm. Damn, I had a good question. And I, I went to write something down. Let me, let me, let me take you back to Empire Late Stage Dimension. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I saw a post from Art uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, it was writing uh, uh, to his audience, to his fans. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, what do you guys want to hear from the stage? I'm going to go out and I'm going to be doing some, some, some songs. What do you want to hear? Okay. Uh, does no one want to hear anything from the last three new albums? Do you all want to live in the past, my old past? <laughs> That's what he was implying. It's funny because when we played at the Calgary Folk Fest with Art, it was all new songs. The only old song he did was, I think, an unreleased one called Soul Power that he dug out of the vaults. But everything was from the last two records. Yeah, I don't know. He moves forward. Him and Jan are the same that way. They're not nostalgic. They're like, I'm doing something new. I want to do this. Like, I did that. That was a different person that did that music. Now I'm someone different, you know? Well, he is a different person, although the, the basic core of Art Bergman is still that guy. Yeah, there's a dark that's a dark core there, where yeah, it he's, shows itself in really, it shows yeah. itself in really 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 dark jokes. Yeah, and extremely vulnerable and raw lyrics. You know, I would venture to say he's a he's a punk rock Leonard Cohen. Now there's a terrible yeah. soundbite for you, yeah. but to me he has that depth of vulnerability and honesty and beauty in describing it. Um, and he's he goes where a lot of people fear to tread. You know, okay, Russell Broom. Um, I, I got the question back, and that is, um, 
how long was the process from the time you started to the time you finished? Um, how many months? Not that many. I'd say six. Okay. Six to seven months. In, in those yeah. four to six months. Yeah. Did you see the music and the experience of creating these songs change art? Did he come to grips with the, his grief? Did it give him some healing? That's all I want to know. The yes, I think I think the version of art that he currently is is incredibly inspiring and positive, and uh, it, he was he was like this was a difficult record to make, and he was the most solid person in the room every day. Wow. Like, and I don't think that's sort of the story about him, but uh, he was a total leader on this. He had great ideas. He had great vision. He was brave to follow other ideas. And he was positive the entire time. Like he uh, he made this a difficult process, actually really pleasurable. And I, I did not think I would say that. I think I happen to think, I'm going to tell you right now, I think it's mm -hmm. Juno material. I think it's as good as he's ever done. I I agree. I think he's he's captured a moment in time that, it's something we all fear, but he's interpreted it through his lens in a way that makes it beautiful and heartbreaking. And yeah, it's it's an important record as a human being. I think the I things gonna, he's articulated. I was, you know? was going to say I was going to say to him, uh, "I'm really proud of you," and he might tell me to go fuck myself. Yeah, <laughs> which probably means thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm proud of him too. You know, like he. Uh, he put a lot on the table with this record emotionally. And uh, that's, that's uh, like, what more can we ask from the artists that we, whose music and art we consume every day, you know, and take for granted. <laughs> so when the song, for example, when the song like, uh, oh, Winterfire. Yeah. It's done and the music dies in the monitors and art looks up at you. Does he want to know, or does he know where he's, what he's created? Does he want affirmation? Uh, that's a good question. I, I, I'm a really positive person in the studio. Like I try and lead with love. I'm, I don't think yelling at people gets a really good result. Sure. You know, some people want an angry hockey coach in the studio and I'm terrible at that. I, uh, mm -hmm. I find if I'm, it's easier to pump someone's tires and make them confident than to have them do things out of spite mm -hmm. so but you know with art I, I i think i would just simply if something was astounding i would just be like that was really good okay. like that was my way of communicating that to him not to get too funny or anything but it's just like that was really good or that really hit stuff like that <laughs> things that i think just mean great let's do it again let's do this to the next one i want to thank you for your time anytime and we'll watch for your projects we'll, we'll build, put them on the screen but Shadow Walk, uh, we're going to be talking about this one quite a bit. Yeah. And art and you and your role in this. Well, yeah, it's a special one. You know, it's um, I'm proud of everything I get to work on. But uh, this one just it felt like it, I think there are songs on it that feel like they're you're seeing pages of a diary you should never, ever be allowed to see. And there's other things that are so filled with hope and and. Uh, and positivity that it almost feels like it's it's synthesized because that's the only way you can get through grief is to talk yourself through it like it's there's so many layers to this record it's two, um, two things did he keep a diary i don't know he, he has books he's shown me his books but those his are lyrics. lyric books yeah i don't know if they're diaries i get they're you know yeah there's well, uh, then then the lyrics become the diary i think so yeah yeah yeah, there's pieces of him lying around the studio somewhere. <laughs> when you finish uh, either either an album or a track that you particularly like, mm -hmm. do you uh, take yourself for a drive and listen to it in a car speaker like others would as you drive? No. So, no, you're, not, I, uh, so you're not a hopeless romantic? No. No, hopeless, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's... You know, I love the work and th there's a little, I, I get a, a tickle in my chest when something feels like it's a success to me. 
Okay. It's just, it's a little fleeting moment in time. And I love that. And I love that spark. And I love that feeling. Um, it's like, as a producer, it's those things where you listen to a song and all of a sudden it feels like a record, you know, yeah. it's, it's, I can't really quantify what it is, but there's something about it where you just feel the emotional intent is coming through in a way that is hitting you the same way you hope it hits a listener. Um, and those little moments are great, but I don't really indulge in them. If they happen, which I, is my goal, and, and, I, and I acknowledge it and I feel it, then great. Then I feel the song is done. I do have one last question. We know that Rick mm-hmm. loves Jen Arden, and the, the, Jen doesn't have any problem getting played, really. <laughs> She's, she, they're, they're, we'll welcome her with open arms. Radio, mm-hmm. Canadian radio has no idea what to do with Art Bergman, except for two, CBC yeah. and CKUA. Right, right. Well, radio sells tires. It doesn't sell records, right? So, like, the impetus to play someone like Art, I don't know. It, it's, I think, Art, similar to Jan, you know, makes music for personal consumption. You know, it's a dialogue between him and the listener. It's not him dictating things to masses of people. Yes, and I think that's a different experience for listening. And sometimes where radio is, is at a forefront, whether you're in your car driving somewhere or you're in a restaurant and you're hearing it, some of the environments don't really invite that level of connection to the music. And if you don't have it to an Art Bergman song, um, then you're missing out on a huge portion of what he's offering the world. But you know? you're also a hookmeister. You know where the hook is. You create hooks. Yeah, yeah. Does he, does he ask you to leave that outside the door, or does he? No, no. He always asked me to play skronk. Yeah, he wants me to play skronk guitar. Like, and to me, that's Ardo Lindsay in uh, the earliest version of the Lounge Lizards. You know, it's people like Elliot Sharp and Mark Rebo. It's those late seventies avant-garde New York jazz guys that I was into as a kid. So when I hear skronk, I'm thinking like, oh yeah, well that sounds like, like my reference for that is to just do something that is you know, is ugly. And, uh, but there's beauty in ugly, right? You know, it's contrast. If he sings a beautiful line and there's a horrible guitar sound coming after it, then it makes that all the more beautiful. It's like a Bukowski poem, right? He'll be writing about these things that you look at the environment, you think it's incredibly horrific, but then he'll have this nugget of beauty in that. And in the context of his surroundings, whether it's, you know, some terrible kind of flop house or the world's shittiest bar, but that moment of, of beauty that he sees and describes to me is all the more poignant in that setting. And I think art has a similar way of, of communicating stuff because he can sing. He's got a great voice. He sings in pitch extremely well. I never tune arts vocals. There's nothing I have to do to, to, to doctor him in any way. But when you put that in contrast with the sneer and the attitude with his delivery sometimes, and then the desire for angular elements in the music it makes the beauty of what he's saying all that more poignant to me that's why i think it's stuff for personal consumption and not just to be it's music to be listened to not just heard you know i'd love to hear it with strings with the symphony orchestra but that's just me and that would require yeah well winterfire has some great strings on it and uh, yeah a few of the songs we had live string players yeah so yeah it'd be Woo. beautiful to hear that for sure okay let's set it loose what's the release date on this baby you're gonna to have to ask Art. You, I don't yeah, know. you're the last one to know. Yeah, yeah. I've already moved on. I'm four <laughs> records past that now, so my brain. Thank is you for your time. You could have mixed something in the 25 minutes that we've been talking. So, um, it's a privilege to talk to you, Terry, and and thanks for giving me the opportunity to. Don't forget Mulligans too every Saturday, f- five I'm to seven. It. F- five five to seven. Send your request in. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Russell. Thanks, Terry. Thanks for all you do thanks for music in Canada. We appreciate it. Huh? See you again. Thanks for all you do for music in Canada. Oh, I appreciate man. it. Thank you, thank you, thank you.